Welcome to Life and Faith from the Centre for Public Christianity. I'm Justine Toe. And I'm Simon Smart. Well, this week we're taking on a very unpopular topic, the kind that might even stop a dinner party rather than start one. But one, of course, that we think is worth tackling. If you have a paradigm that doesn't allow you to ask questions, there's something wrong with the paradigm. And inside the traditional paradigm of Dante's Hell Inferno, you're not allowed to ask all kinds of questions. It's not a problem to ask questions, but sometimes when certain questions are asked, it's by someone who's a coward and doesn't have the conviction to declare their answer. The notion that there really isn't hell is simply a wussy effort to make God a nice guy. Can anyone really believe that Hitler's had a second chance? I don't think so. Now that grab was from the documentary Hellbound that has recently been shown all over North America and is causing quite a stir. So we're going to be talking hell and judgment over these next two episodes of Life and Faith. We're going to be thinking about the Christian understanding of judgment and specifically of hell. Maybe is hell a place or is it a state of mind? And who's going there? Most people, some, you know, some people, no one. And where do the life and death and resurrection of Jesus come into this? And these are all the sorts of questions that Hellbound addresses. Now, Simon, do you think it's surprising that this topic is getting so much attention these days? No, I don't, actually. It surprises me, actually, that it doesn't get more attention uh, because it's a vital question to examine. There can't be many more serious, important questions to consider than where we'll spend eternity. And Christian theology and tradition teaches some very definite things about that. So, no, the, the question of death and what's beyond it uh, remains a, a crucial one for humans everywhere. But let's be honest, like, no one likes the idea of judgment. No, we don't. Uh, I don't. Uh, it, it's, and, you know, it's, it's really offensive to, to many people these days, increasingly so. And when, I, when we're so attached to uh, the notion of freedom being endless choice, which I happen to think is the way we, we tend to go these days, anything that gets in the way of that choice, people tend to find a way to reject it. And I think that's why this discussion is largely off the table. It's just too offensive. Uh, but it's a really important discussion to have because if you believe the Bible has something to say about who God is and who we are and the nature of our reality, it's important to get as close as we can to the correct answers about those things. So the question of judgment is important. I spoke with Kevin Miller, the director of Hellbound from his home in Canada. So, Kevin, thanks for joining us on the program. Hey, great to be here. So, what first got you interested in this topic? Well, I come from a Christian background myself, and, and you're right. I mean, hell is one of those issues within Christianity that typically you don't question. It's just part of the package. So you become a Christian, you, you sort of accept this idea that some people are going to go to heaven. Of course, that's going to be you. And uh, some people are going to be hell, go to hell, and that's, you know, the other people. And um, it, but, but as a Christian, it's, it's something that I think everyone on some level wrestles with, because how do you reconcile this idea of eternal torment with a God who supposedly loving. And so this has definitely been personally a, a huge issue for me. And so Hellbound became really my way of trying to grapple with it. I think that it's a, you know, I've been investigating that topic and related issues for several years. And, and um, it was uh, finally uh, in January 2011 that I had the opportunity to begin production on this film. And, and it was just an attempt to really go deep on this topic because you know, Christianity is often presented as this cut and dried thing to the outside world, and I think that's a mistake that within the faith itself, just as you'll find within Islam and, and Buddhism and all sorts of other religions, there's all sorts of um, different factions, um, some progressives, some conservatives, some uh, liberals, all trying to work out different um, aspects of the faith. And so uh, definitely with the topic of hell, you see um, that sort of thing playing itself out. We see a lot of interviews with popular writers in the documentary, but we don't really see a lot of theologians. Can you give us a sense of why you've chosen that tack? Well, actually, there are quite a few theologians. I think I somebody asked me that recently, and I think we've got at least a dozen people with PhDs in uh, theology or biblical studies um, or philosophy of religion or related fields. So we actually do have quite a few academics um, in the film. And we have a blend as well of some people who write at a popular level. We have atheists in the film. We have death metal musicians in the film. We have a, a broad spectrum of people. What we really tried to do in the film is to say, 
Okay, within Christianity, there is a broad spectrum of belief. I mean, if you just look at uh, Eastern Orthodoxy, Catholicism, and then the various types of um, Protestantism, and so really trying to span the gamut, but then looking outside of Christianity, particularly at people who are reacting against Christianity largely because of this idea of hell and the image of God that comes with it. So we really sought to be as inclusive as possible with a variety of voices. What's the reaction to your film been like? Um, it's actually been quite positive. I mean, we, we probably received the harshest response to the film from the bastion of the conservative Christian establishment in, in America, which is Christianity Today. Um, but by and large, I mean, we've, we've gotten very, you know, surprisingly positive reviews from uh, Variety, uh, the New York Times, um, uh, horror film movie sites of all places. Um, but from the mainstream press, the Huffington Post, all these places, we've got very um, strong, positive reaction to the film. I actually toured the film. Uh, we, we screened in, I think, 40-some cities across North America, and I probably did Q&A screenings in uh, maybe 30 of those cities. And, you know, the experience in every city was almost exactly the same, where I, I go in kind of expecting you know, it to be highly combative. But instead, what what the overwhelming response is, is thanks for making a film that opens up this conversation. And that's really what we're trying to do in Hellbound, is to provoke informed discussion to, it's not supposed to be the last word on hell. I mean, hopefully for a lot of people, it's going to be the first word. And, and it will just really challenge people to rethink uh, a lot of these issues that they've taken for granted over the years. That was Hellbound director Kevin Miller. It seems that he wanted to at least have a good discussion around the issue of hell. What do you reckon, Simon? Yeah, and there's no doubt he'd get a reaction to this. And that, that's a good thing. It's a topic that brings up strong emotions, that's for sure, and you see that in the film. And uh, there are definitely some unhelpful images and misleading ideas on what God's judgment is about that have come into our culture. I mean, we get some of the, the great works of art uh, over the centuries that I think have had a real influence in this way. You might think of something like Michelangelo's Last Judgment, which um, is uh, on the walls of the Sistine Chapel. Uh, you get horrifying images there, or even Dante's Inferno, uh, the great 14th century allegory of a journey through hell. And you get these lurid images of suffering and torment. That's had a big influence for sure. Um, but the, And this subject's really it's a heavy one. And it's just that it's worth reminding us ourselves that the language that Jesus, who talks the most actually about hell, uh, is, is using a language where he's drawing on really symbolic material to stress a real thing. So he's stressing the serious nature of judgment. We have to remember the symbolic nature of the language as well and be careful about getting too specific about the nature of that judgment and what we're talking about. You sometimes hear people say that if God wants to send people to hell especially those who don't follow him, then he can't be a God worth following. Yeah, you do hear that a bit. And uh, I think it's a terrible misunderstanding about who the God of the Bible is. The picture is one, in the Bible is one of God's constantly reaching out to his people in mercy and forgiveness. And uh, I guess the, you know, the big sweep of the Bible is one of people constantly rebelling from that love. Uh, but still... God finds a way for people to come back to him. It's just that ultimately, I guess, there's a choice of whether we want to accept that relationship or reject it. And there's a sense of respecting those wishes. I think when we talk about God's judgment, we have to keep that in mind. So ultimately, the panoply of Scripture is pointing to one thing, and that is either reconciliation with God or separation from God. You often find folks whose map is the territory. If you disagree with them, you're not disagreeing with them, you're disagreeing with God. I use the language of national and state borders or boundaries. I can work with anybody in the state borders, but I can't partner with anyone who's crossed a national border. i got to tell you, that's not a good way to be. If someone's got a, a position or argument and you think it's wrong, then why do you fear looking at it? The truth shouldn't have anything to fear. That idea that truth shouldn't have anything to fear, that's from Hellbound. But plenty of people have also reacted to this film saying that it's not an accurate biblical portrayal. Yes, and you get this debate going on in the film between those who believe in hell as an eternal state for those who are outside of relationship with God 
and those who think that because of Jesus' death and resurrection, uh, that in the end, the victory of the cross will mean that all people, one way or another, will be saved. And there's no doubt that the film comes down on the side of that universalist idea. You've got to say, though, like you can see the attraction of that universalist idea. Everyone wants to talk about God as a God of love, and he is that, right? So what's wrong with that? I just think the, the amount of the material in the Bible that takes you in another direction is, is overwhelming. J.I. Packer, my old lecturer, used to say this is avalanche dodging when it comes to the material in the Bible. And so while the uh, makers of this film seem to want to sort of leech out aspects of God that are right through the Bible, that he's holy, that he requires uh, holiness on his people's part to some degree, that we're incapable of that and we need help in it, uh, are, are part of the same thing. So there's, a, there's judgment, there's mercy. I'd agree with um, the makers of the film who say that God's primary characteristic that you see in the Bible is one of grace and great love and mercy. I really believe that. But I, can't, I think you have to hold that intention to some degree with his holiness. And judgment is part of that. Do you think Hellbound, the film, has kind of lost that tension that you're speaking of? Well, in fairness, they do talk about judgment, um, uh, like a post-death judgment, but then an opportunity to come back to God in that and a refining sort of aspect to this. So no, they don't junk it completely. They keep it there. You know, the nature of that judgment, I think, um, may not quite match with the sort of material that's in the Bible where Jesus talks about, you know, I never knew you and these sorts of pretty sobering uh, comments that he makes. So yeah, it's there, but we need to look carefully at whether this matches the, the biblical material. So what then does it look like to hold um, the hold the two in, in tension, I guess, the the aspects of God's holiness, uh, but also his love? How do you how do you juggle that? I think there's a, a way in which you have to realize that God's not someone to be trifled with. Um, there's a, a, a necessary reverence for God if we're seeing God for who he truly is and who we are before him. But the overwhelming picture, Justin, in the Bible is that God's a God is a father figure who just loves us. He's full of mercy and grace. I think that they get that part right in this film. And he's, he's looking for a way to bring us back to him. Um, we see that in, in the life of Jesus. And so I think you've got to, you've got to remember both things, uh, remembering that. The, but the mercy and the grace, I, I think, absolutely is the most outstanding characteristic of God. And it's one really worth responding to. So in terms of the movie Hellbound, if you want to watch it, you can order the DVD from hellboundthemovie.com or you can stream or download it from Vimeo On Demand. So next time on Life and Faith, we'll keep talking about this issue of hell and judgment. And we're going to hear from people on the street, you know, what do they think about hell? And we're also going to hear the thoughts of John Dixon, ancient historian, biblical scholar and director of the Centre for Public Christianity. Here's a taste of what he had to say on this topic. John, we often hear that the Christian gospel is about good news. What's the good news when we're talking about judgment and hell? Well, it's two parts of good news. One part is that God sees the injustice of the world. He hears the oppressed's cry for someone to make things right. And he is coming to make things right. This is why the Bible can actually say hallelujah for the judgments of God. And you certainly see that in the final book of uh, Revelation in the Bible. Uh, there's great praise for the God who finally comes to overthrow those who have oppressed the poor, who have um, shed blood around the world and so on. So if you think of it like this, that it's actually a sign of God's love for the oppressed that he is coming to bring his justice on the oppressor. In a weird way, judgment is a great sign of God's love because it's that he loved the massacred indigenous people of Tasmania, that he will bring those who perpetrated those judgments to justice. And there's a sense in which love fuels that judgment. So judgment itself is good news. The good news of the gospel message is not just that judgment is coming because that's righting the wrongs of the world, but that there is amnesty. God has declared an amnesty so that all who turn to him for forgiveness will, because of Jesus' death, be forgiven. So not only is judgment good news, the good news is that we can be forgiven. Mm -hmm. 